The recent news of a ship owned by an international non-governmental organization which rescued illegal migrants at sea and were turned away by two nations but finally birthed in Spain was reported to have many Nigerians on board. There was also another report that over 200 lives were lost at the Mediterranean Sea in the past week. This is the sad reality of human trafficking and illegal migration. You are watching Naftip on the Move. I am Imanolo Keke. Glad to have you join us. Nigeria is not resting on its oars in a fight against human trafficking, as Naftip is constantly devising strategies to bring the activities of human traffickers to a halt. One of such activities is the recent visit of the Director General of Naftip, Dame Jilly Okadandi, to the Minister of youth and sports, Solomon Dalong, to fashion out ways to prevent trafficking in persons during the World Cup. This has already informed some arrests. Stay with Naptip on the Move. Following a closed door meeting with the Honorable Minister of Sports, Solomon Selkap Dalong, and the Russian envoy on the need to forestall human trafficking under the guise of traveling for the World Cup. The federal government, through the Federal Ministry of Sports, mandated that all group delegates to the World Cup must get a clearance certificate from NAPTIP before they can be allowed to travel. This led to operatives of NAPTIP intercepting and rescuing 10 Nigerian youths who were being trafficked to Moscow, Russia. They were intercepted at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, while trying to board a Turkish airline flight to Russia. The rescued victims comprise of nine young girls and one boy. Five of the rescued persons are from Edo State, three are from Delta State, one from Imo State and the other from Benue State. They all had the FIFA Fan Identity Card. Five suspects, including a police sergeant and a quarantine officer, were arrested as they were caught coordinating the movement of the victims. Those arrested are Esam Matthew, Stephen Fayamiwo, Aziz Olowo, Idou Fashakin, and Eni Godwin. This successful operation was supported by officials of the Aviation Security, Department of State Service, and the Joint Border Task Force, of which NAPTIP is a member. At the headquarters in Abuja, the Director General of NAPTIP, Dangeli Akadani, met with members of the Media Coalition Against Human Trafficking. A team from the Media Coalition and Awareness to Holst Trafficking, MECATS, led by Funlaya Joseph, the General Secretary and Personal Assistant to the International Director, visited NAPTIP. Commending the Director General for her support, the General Secretary, Funlaya Joseph, stated the purpose of her visit. Based on the workshop that was done in November last year, we would love to bring in NAPTIP to provide some trainers for the five trainings that we're planning and looking forward to doing mm -hmm. to make sure that the trainings are you know one of the best that safe houses mm -hmm. can come together and have so because the wealth of experience within NATI cannot be duplicated anywhere else also we would like to start the international <coughs> conference with the people who are hands-on working in all the different factors 
of government. But we also understand that not a lot of these people know MIPAD. And the help of NATI to drive, to get them to the table, cannot be overemphasized. Welcoming the team from MECAT, the Director General of NAPTIP, Dame Julie Oka Donnelly, stressed on the need for capacity building and pledged NAPTIP's support. Capacity building, you can never overemphasize it. It's a very important thing. And of course, NAPTIP would always be ready and um, willing to. Um, send some of our own to train mm -hmm. in all these capacity building programs because they are very experienced. It's always a pleasure to have our partners you know, sit down together, strategize on the way forward, you know, in trying to curb you know, human trafficking. Effective collaboration and awareness campaigns is one of the key strategies of the agency in tackling human trafficking. Stop human <laughs> trafficking. <laughs>In Enugu State, the Zono Commander, Comfort Aboko, joined some notable civil society organizations to carry out public enlightenment campaigns for youths to catch them young. The Enugu State Command of NAPTIP, in collaboration with Ugo's Touch of Life, a foundation set up by Her Excellency Monica Ogwai, the wife of the Governor of Enugu State, recently carried out a campaign for creating safe spaces for children in Enugu. The campaign had students from 34 secondary schools in attendance who were advised to serve as peer educators to others. In a related development, the Enugu Zonal Commander, Comfort Agboko, attended a sensitization event organized by Christ in Me Charity Organization, where awareness messages on human trafficking and child abuse were extended to less privileged street children and physically challenged children. Also in Bini City, the Zono Commander Ndukanwewene collaborated with Obe Ware the Seconds Foundation to raise awareness on the dangers of human trafficking. Keep watching. The NAPTIP Benin Zonal Command, in collaboration with Oba Eware the Seconds Foundation and other stakeholders, organized a one-day walk against human trafficking. The walk took the participants through major streets in the metropolis. In a related development, the Benin Zonal Commander, Nduka Nwenwene Esquire, delivered a lecture on the role of the War Against Indisciplined Brigade in the fight against human trafficking at the annual zonal retreat and camping exercise of the brigade. The retreat, which was held at Tayo Akwata University of Education, Ekiadolo, Edo State, was well attended. To further strengthen communication strategies of NAFTIP, the British High Commission organized a training. Staff of the agency, drawn from various departments, recently attended a two-day training workshop on effective communications strategies organized by the British High Commission. The training, which was geared towards enabling the agency communicate its work, programs and achievements better and proactively engage and inform the public on the dangers of trafficking in persons, had Amina Makele and Santos Shama as facilitators. The Director General of NAPTIP, Dame Julie Oka Donnelly and the Director, Training and Manpower Development, Ulubiyi Olushayo, also participated in the training. From Akwaibom State, we have a report of a conviction. Stay with us. A federal high court sitting in Uyo, Akwaibom State, has sentenced a 27-year-old man, Sylvanus Ubong Sunday, from Ibesipo Asatan local government area of Akwaibom State, to two years imprisonment for human trafficking offences. The accused was arrested by NAPTIP officials in November 2017, following a report from a mother that her seven-year-old daughter was being sexually exploited by the accused person. Preliminary investigations then revealed that he was also sexually abusing another 10-year-old girl. He was subsequently arraigned on a two-count charge for sexually exploiting the two underaged girls 
an offence punishable under Section 16.1 of the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Enforcement and Administration Act of 2015. The presiding judge, Honourable Justice I. M. Sani, sentenced him to two years imprisonment on each charge without any option of fine. However, the sentences are to run concurrently beginning from the day of his arrest, November 8, 2017. Reacting to the news, management of NAPTIP, while expressing gladness that justice was served, hoped for stiffer sentences for child exploiters and urged members of the public to report such cases to NAPTIP. The Training and Manpower Development Department enjoyed yet another pro bono training workshop by a well-meaning Nigerian forensic company. Sentinel Forensics Limited, in collaboration with NAPTIP's Training and Manpower Department, organized a refresher course on forensic investigation and analysis at the agency's training resource center in Abuja. The training coordinator, Joseph Kayode Funsho Ako, shed lights on the use of scientific techniques to investigate crime scenes and gather intelligence. Various aspects of the course, such as the principles of crime scene management, personnel who may be present at the crime scene, different types of crime scenes, and how to manage a crime scene were covered. Representative of the Director, Training and Manpower Development, Moses Unongo, commended the management of Sentinel Forensics for training staff of the agency at no cost and called on other well-meaning Nigerians to assist the agency meet its training needs. Keeping abreast of new trends in investigation and evidence gathering is part of the agency's strategy towards fulfilling its mandate of curbing human trafficking and violence against persons. Dangeli Okadani was one of the special guests and Law Week of the Abuja chapter of the Nigerian Bar Association. The Nigerian Bar Association, Abuja Branch Unity Bar, recently held its annual Law Week. Delivering the welcome address, the chairperson, Princess Frank Chukwani, stated that the theme, the legal profession as a catalyst for national development, integration and sustainable development, was vital in the pursuit of a better Nigeria. The Honorable Chief Judge of the Federal Capital Territory, Justice Ishak Bello, called for strengthened unity and discipline at the bar. The keynote speaker, Deputy Senate President Senator Ike Ekweremadu, in his address, sought for legal activism towards a better democracy. Goodwill messages were delivered by some distinguished guests, including the Director General of NAPTIP, Dame Julie Oka Donley. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, was established in response to the social and negative consequences endangered by human trafficking phenomena. And NAPTIP is unique as it is the first and only institution with a mandate that combines law enforcement and social welfare. As identification of emerging issues and the elimination of challenges in the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 will enhance the operational efficiency of NAPTIP in the prosecution of human trafficking cases under the Trafficking in Persons, Prohibition, Enforcement and Administrative Act 2015 as well as violence against persons under the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act 2015 respectfully. The Unity Bar Law Week was well attended by many distinguished legal luminaries. Prevention, they say, is better than cure. Up next is a sensitization workshop by the staff of the Public Enlightenment Department. Don't go away. In line with the agency's efforts to curb human trafficking, the Director General of NAPTIP, Dame Julie Oka Donley, and her team visited Government Girls Secondary School, Kujé Abuja, to sensitize the students on the effects of human trafficking child abuse and violence against persons. The Director of the Public Enlightenment Department, Arinze Orakwe, and the Assistant Director, Ebele Ulasi, gave lectures on internal and external trafficking, child labor, and domestic violence. Desensitization was enlightening as students sought to gain more insight on the preventive measures. 
The students were then advised to report suspected cases of human trafficking and they joined the fight against human traffickers. I am priceless, nobody can buy me. I am priceless, nobody can buy me. In a related development, staff from the Public Enlightenment Department of NAPTIP visited Government Secondary School, Tudumwada Zone 4, Abuja, to educate students on the dangers of human trafficking and child abuse. The staff gave lectures and encouraged the students to report issues relating to human trafficking and child abuse. Public Enlightenment Campaign is essential in the prevention of human trafficking, child abuse and domestic violence. Human trafficking is one of the worst crimes on earth. It is a grave violation of your human rights. The victims of human trafficking are majorly women, youths, children and men who may never live to tell the story. These victims could be your wife, daughter, mother, sister, brother, child or relative. No one deserves to be trafficked. NAPTIP has intensified its effort against this heinous crime. But we need your support. We need you to join this fight. Government officials, corporate organizations, traditional rulers, religious leaders, and the organized private sector have enlisted in this fight. What are you waiting for? Join NAPTI to end this global moral epidemic now. Report cases of human trafficking to these NAPTI hotlines 0703 00 203 080 02 empowered to protect you. The Enugu State Zonal Command of NAPTIP recovered a boy of about two years old from his buyer in Obosi, Anambra State. We have to break protocol to reveal his face as we plead with all well-meaning Nigerians and anyone who can identify him to please inform his parents and relations to visit the NAPTI Zonal Command in Enugu State with relevant documents and medical records for identification and reunion. Please be informed that all documents will be scrutinized and further medical tests carried out to ascertain claims. If anyone has a lead, please call 0708 060 1803 It's now time to share the story of a rescued victim, one does they say shall never end. Keep watching. It all started in the year 2014 when around that January time my my dad's sister's daughter came to the village that she wants to pick me to the city which is Lagos. Meanwhile, they promised my dad that they are going to put me in school, they are going to make me comfortable, all sorts of promises. So when they took me to Lagos for nine months, I was not in school. Meanwhile, their their oldest their son is going to school and is also doing lesson. So sometimes I'll ask her that since his, her son is doing lesson, can't they enroll me in that lesson too? So she'll beat me, all sorts of maltreatment, washing of clothes, all, the, all that. Then around that October, 2000, that same 2014, something happened. The husband, somebody gave him money to buy motor for him. He ate the money and ran away. Because of that, they had, we, we, we had to move to Abuja here. So one certain time like this, I don't know what happened. He and his wife was quarreling, was beating her, breaking glasses in the house. As he beat his wife, he, he sent her out of the house and she should not come in and her house again. He came to my room and told me that she moved in into his room and his children were in that room. So I just picked up my, my blanket that was on the ground and I moved to the other room that he was that he, he stayed in my wife. Around that 12 o'clock, I just saw somebody from nowhere just carry his, his um, singlet. Because he was using one thick thing like this, he used it to tight my mouth, hold me, and he threatened me that anything that is going to happen now, if I mention it outside or I tell anybody, he's going to kill me, not only kill me, he's going to kill my parents too, which is my dad. He specifically said that he's going to kill my dad. So I was afraid, I was crying. He took off my clothes. I don't know what he used. 
one liquid like this, rub it on my anus, and he slept with me that night. So the next day, which is with the parents, the parents of my auntie, came to settle the case. I told them that see, this is what this man is doing to me, and see where he when he started this. They told me that okay, that I should I should just calm down, that everything will be okay. I should just stay. And I should not let my auntie know because that time she was pregnant. I should not let my auntie know anything about it. On the day that is 25th December, the Gongo, as I finished bathing, I entered my room. I, I was tying my towel as I entered my room. Then I now saw him followed me with, as he immediately entered the room, pushed me and locked the door. As he pushed me, he pushed me to the bed, he pressed my head on the pillow. He still did the same thing again the second time. On New Year's Day again, the children were not aware what was happening. They were watching movie, their cartoon. As he locked the door, he repeated the same thing. By that time, I could not hold my stool anymore. So my auntie was not noticing it. She would ask me that, what is wrong with me? I'll just tell her that I was having, I'm having running stomach. She would still beat me, tell me all sorts of things. So I said to myself that this is the opportunity I have to tell her what is happening. I, can, I cannot be here killing myself. And, I, and nothing will happen. So I just opened up to her and said, that, Auntie, please, I just want to tell you this thing. She said, that, What is it? That's when I opened up to her. I told her everything. As in, she was angry, shouting. She, she could not believe it. She was there like she was, her body was weak. So I don't know that my uncle was outside because he came back from work. I don't know that he was in the, in the window listening to what I was saying. So after I finished telling her, that's when he now knocked. Normally, he would knock and call his son, which his, his son name is Divine. who called the son in the low tone. But that day, the way he shake the door and called his child, he shouted the child name, then Divine, come and open this door. So as I heard his name, as I heard his voice, I followed the back door. I went to the school, I told my friends that, see you, see what my uncles are saying, that they are going to take me to the village, that all what happened to me, that I was lying to them. They now said that, no, that cannot happen. That what I will do now, that I should go and meet the counselor in the school, and, they all escorted me to the council office. I explained everything to her. She had to take me to the principal office and I explained everything to her. So the principal started crying. She said, that, why would this thing be happening? So that is the day she took phone. I don't know who she, she called that day. So around 10 or to 11, that's when I saw a boss. They came and they told me that it's not it. They are coming to take me. So the principal said, that I, should not, I should not worry that they are going to take care of me. And that's when they not take me to Napti Shelter. And I stayed there for three months with all that training activities they were doing in, the, in Napti there. Napti have tried a lot for me. I thank them so much because without them, I don't think that anybody can help me. This is to inform the general public that Perebi Nicole Otubo, a notorious human trafficker, is wanted by NAPTIP. Anyone with useful information on her whereabouts should contact the agency on this toll-free number 0703-0000203 or 0800-225-5627-847. You can email info at naptip.gov.ng. NAPTIP empowered to protect you. For more inquiries and support or to report cases of suspected human trafficking and child abuse, please call NAPTIF hotlines on 0703-0000203 or 0800-2255-627847 or email info at naptip.gov.ng. Visit our website www.naptip.gov.ng Follow us on our social media platforms at Naptip Nigeria and watch our videos on YouTube. We've come to the end of today's episode, but I must urge you to support Naptip by reporting suspected cases of human trafficking, child abuse and all forms of violence against persons. Speak out. Don't hold back. I hope to see you same time next week. I am Imanalo Keke. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.